It's Wednesday, January 6th. This is the news on PBCJ. I'm Carol Francis. Twelve caregivers at the Maxfield Park Children's Home have reportedly tested positive for COVID-19. According to the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, the positive caregivers were asymptomatic and have since been sent home to self-isolate. One of the largest children's homes on the island, the Maxfield Park Children's Home, houses 92 children and 80 caregivers. The agency says no child has tested positive. The residents were tested during visits to the facility by the public health team of the Ministry of Health and Wellness between December 13 and 30, 2020. Arrangements have been made for the remaining caregivers to be tested. The agency has also indicated that the home has been adhering to COVID-19 protocols. We now get the latest COVID-19 clinical management summary from the health authorities. Jamaica has recorded another COVID-19 death. The number of fatalities has moved to 306. The latest victim is a 31-year-old male of a Hanover address. Also, over the past 24 hours, 84 new COVID-19 cases were reported, pushing the overall case count to 13,330. There are now 1,682 active cases. In the parish breakdown, St. Catherine and Clarendon posted the highest numbers with 18 cases each, followed by Kingston and St. Andrew with 17 cases. St. Mary and St. Thomas both have three cases. Portland, Trelawney and Manchester each reported two cases. One case was recorded in Hanover and St. James. The other parishes had no cases. 76 recoveries were reported, pushing that total to 11,182. 92 persons are hospitalized, four are moderate and seven are critical. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Gabrielle Thompson. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett has expressed condolences to the family and loved ones of the late Harriet Harry Mirage, past president of the Shipping Association of Jamaica and chairman of the Lanaman and Morris Group of Companies. In a release, Minister Bartlett hailed Mr. Mirage as one of Jamaica's stalwarts in the tourism and shipping industry, adding that his death is indeed a great loss. Mr. Mirage's company, Lanaman & Morris, is credited as the shipping agent for cruise lines such as Carnival, Norwegian, Holland America, Costa and Ada Cruises. He is also the founding manager of the Ocho Rios Cruise Ship Terminal. Over the years, Lanaman & Morris has become the leading cruise agent, representing in excess of 75% of all cruises that call at Jamaican ports. Mr. Mirage served on the Tourism Enhancement Fund's Board of Directors as Chairman of the Audit Subcommittee and the Human Resources Subcommittee from June 2012 to February 2016. At the time of his passing, Harry Mirage was Chairman of the Kingston Port Workers Superannuation Fund. He was also a Director of Express Catering at Margaritaville Turks and Caicos. The Maroons are one of the most recognizable cultural groups in Jamaica. Each year, the Akampong Maroons used January 6th to commemorate the signing of the Peace Treaty with the British after the First Maroon War in 1739. The Maroons then fought the British to a standstill. They used the densely wooded areas to their advantage to move quickly and to hide. Today, the Akampong Maroons can travel much easier than their ancestors did. The path has gotten even smoother with the acquisition of a new bus courtesy of the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports. More from Marlon Samuels. A compound performers will be travelling to and from other Maroon villages in a coaster bus donated by the Ministry of Culture. The keys to the bus were handed over to the Colonel of the Akampong Maroons, Fern Williams, on Monday, January 4, 2021. On behalf of the Akampong Maroons, of the entire Maroon community in Jamaica because this will transport people from the other three communities as well. Um, you can rest assured that we will take the performance care. We will care so much 
that you will give us another one <laughs> <laughs> to transport our children yeah. and for just for the school purpose. Um, as you say earlier, it's long in coming, but I know you deliver. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I spoke with you in 2017 at the garden house, you take that letter to the Honorable Prime Minister, who say, well, it will be in your charge to deliver. You had um, come good with your promise. And again, I must say, rest assured that it will be taken, the best of you will be taken. Of you. And we will cherish and adore the memory of the new the first Maroon Treaty was signed by the Leeward Maroon leader, Kodja, on March 1, 1739. Maroon communities operate as a country within a country. They have their own laws and their own leaders, who are referred to as colonels. On January 6, the Maroons will celebrate the 233rd anniversary of the signing of the treaty. The celebrations will be virtual due to COVID-19. COVID-19 has affected, has impacted tremendously on the celebra celebrations where people from all over the world would come and enjoy. This time around, we can't have the large celebration, but we plan to celebrate virtually. And this handing over of the bus is a symbol of our appreciation, the government's appreciation and the government's recognition and respect of the community, of the Akampong community and all the Maroon communities in Jamaica. This year we will have it, as the minister say, Zoom. Let me cut it short and say, by Zoom. So persons will enjoy it from the comfort of their homes. I've been encouraging persons to stay at their homes. As the little girl say, stay at your yard. I am doing that. And in fact, I've gone to the outlying district asking that they stay home. I must admit that some persons say, well, we are coming. But the police will be out there to assist us to let persons stay out of the community. You see, it's a closely knit community. And if one should catch this COVID-19, it will be a disaster. One should take into consideration that we don't own a hospital and as such, we would have to be leaning on the government. And let's say the very government who is saying that we should obey and if we should disobey, I am one person to say, well, you get whatever you ask for. When if and when, I know the Minister of Health would not see a cause person to return without being treated. But if this is so, I would have to say we cause it on ourselves because we have been, I personally have been preaching and begging persons to stay home, observe the social distance, wear your mask, sanitize your um, and, and I've been sensitizing the communities, not only the community, Jamaica and a whole. The Maroons are a symbol of self-reliance, determination and freedom. They created a part for Jamaica's independence. PBCJ will broadcast on Wednesday, January 6, beginning at 10 in the morning, special features on the Maroons. At 2 in the afternoon, the civic ceremony being held in a compound will be broadcast live on all of PBCJ's social media platforms. For the news on PBCJ, I am Marlon Samuels. The Donald Quarry High School is part of the face-to-face -face pilot program being exposed by the Education Ministry. Our reporter Melvin Pennant gives us an insight into how the school is navigating the new school term thus far. The Donald Quarry High School principal, Talbert Weir, explains that upper school students were invited in for face-to-face -face classes in the new school term. In regards to this 
term activities, our grade 11 students have been invited to come back um, for us to do face to face. So far, 41 third of the population has turned up, today being our first day. Um, in the latter part of this afternoon, we will be reaching out to um, our grade 11 parents, reminding them that the children are to turn out. Towards the end, sometime in December, we had a PTA meeting with the grade 11 parents, reminding them of or informing them of the activities that will be taking place. However, as I noted before, only one third of the students have turned out. When our news team visited the school, we found classes in session. From what we saw, the classes were operating under strict COVID-19 protocols with masks and social distancing, as well as proper signage and checkpoints for temperature checks and sanitizing. Principal Weir said the school had taken even more precautions. The process that we use at Donald Curry High School is that all pedestrians are expected to use the pedestrian gate and all vehicular traffic, they are parked in another location. They will be sanitized and their temperatures will be taken and then they will come by the water trough where they will wash their hands. Melvin Pennant, PBCJ News. The Jamaica Stock Exchange Indices advanced in its last trading session. Here are the details of that and other market news in the Business Report with Gabriel Thompson. In Tuesday's trading session, the JSE combined index advanced by 1,365 points to close at under 400,000 units. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 85 stocks, of which 37 advanced, 40 declined, and 12 traded firm. The junior market index advanced by 19 points to close at under 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for 138 Students Living Variable Preference, Access Financial Services Limited, and AMG Packaging and Paper Company. Stocks declined for 138 Students Living Jamaica, Berger Paints Jamaica, and Cargo Handlers Limited. Trading firm were 1834 Investments Limited, Blue Power Group Limited, and Derriman Trading Company Limited. Derriman Trading Company Limited was the volume leader with 3.6 million units followed by Sagicor Select Funds Limited Financial with 2.7 million units and the Trans-Jamaican Highway Limited with 1.8 million units. Now for the foreign exchange. The US dollar on Tuesday, January 5 ended trading at $142.98. The Canadian dollar sold for an average $112.16. The pound sterling traded for $195.05 and the euro ended trading at $176.04. Oil prices extended gains on Wednesday, rising to their highest since last February after Saudi Arabia announced a big voluntary production cut and, as an industrial report showed, U.S. inventories fell last week. Brent crude futures added $0.85 cents at $54.45 a barrel. West Texas intermediate crude futures gained $0.52 cents at $50.45 a barrel. And that does it for this edition of the Business Report on PBCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. In the first of a two-part episode on today's Living Healthy feature, H.D. Jazz interviews Associate Lecturer in the UWI's Department of Surgery, Dr. Francis Barnett. Today's topic is all about solutions to sinusitis, allergies, swollen tonsils, and more. Hi, I'm HD. Welcome to season nine of HD's Jazz. And this season we'll be coming to you from the hills of St. Andrew. Can you see the lovely Kingston city behind me? Kingston Harbor. 
New Kingston and Halfway Tree. But I have a question for you. How nosy are you? We're in the beautiful hills of St. Andrew. Can you see the fabulous view behind me? And this morning, I'm speaking with our guest, Dr. Francis Barnett. He's an otolaryngologist. Big word. Hello. Glad to be here. Glad to see you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what that word means, otolaryngologist? Uh, um, uh, otolaryngologist is a fancy term for ENT surgeon. Um, and we are primary, a sur primarily a surgical field. And uh, yes, everybody knows the ear, nose, throat surgeon, but classically we were head and neck surgeons and still are. The, we do a lot of things outside of the ear and the nose and the throat. So we deal also with a lot of neck disease. So goiters, parathyroid disease, head and neck cancers, which is a, a big um, part of what we deal with. But um, otolaryngologist is just a fancy term, really, and it truly belittles everything that we do. Mm. Mm. Well, I learned something today. <laughs> well, I'm not going to focus so much on the ears, mm -hmm. but noses. Mm -hmm. So many people have yeah. issues with noses. Mm -hmm. I work in the mouth but I look up noses all day long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell yeah. me some of the challenges, some of the common problems why we are not able to breathe properly right. through our noses. Oh, stuffy nose is a very common symptom and a miserable symptom also. And um, one of the commonest causes of having a stuffy nose is allergies, mm -hmm. allergic rhinitis, which is allergies affecting the nose. And these allergies set up inflammation and so the inflammation leads to swelling of the lining of the nose. And so it narrows the airspace within the nose. So mm -hmm. there is not enough space to breathe through. Something else that is common is sinusitis. And, um, and this is very, very common. The, the sinuses are air filled spaces within the bones of the face and they open into the nasal cavity. And the sinuses are, the lining of the sinuses produce mucus. And this, when the sinuses become infected or inflamed, pus and so on can form within the sinuses and this can drain into the nasal cavity and lead into inflammation in the nose again. And so this inflammation in the nose is what sets up a lot of this stuffiness, yes. the drainage to the back of the throat. Yes. Um, pain over the face, you yeah. know, and these are symptoms that commonly go with the stuffy nose. Yeah. Um, in kids, the something that is common for stuffy nose is adenoids, mm -hmm. and these adenoids are swellings that are behind the nose, and we really can't see them by looking through the nose or in the back of the throat. Mm -hmm. But sometimes these symptoms that I just mentioned, the stuffiness, the runny nose, etc., can you know, imply that this is there. So these would be probably the three most common causes of stuffiness that we have, you know. Okay, um, what about the person who maybe was playing football at 11, right. got hit in the nose, it was swollen, seemed to have resolved itself, but possibly mm -hmm. a fracture that wasn't healed. Would that be a, a challenge? Yes, that that definitely is. The the nose is separated by uh, a septum, something that divides it into two halves. And sometimes this septum or column is it fractured when you are playing sports or it can even flat fracture while coming through the bird canal. Oh. And so it's pushed over to one side and so narrows the, the nasal cavity on one side. And so this, this can cause toughness, right? But it's not as common in our population. Um, black people have a bigger nose than the white person. And in Caucasians, it tends to cause a bigger problem okay. than it does in our population. Well, but that, it is possible. That is so good to know. <laughs> 
Listen, I'm out of here. Check us the next time. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and our LFD website. In regional news, we start in St. Lucia, where a 95-year-old father has outlived his son and is hoping for the speedy recovery of his grandson. Both men were shot on Monday evening, marking the island's first homicide for 2021. We have more in this report. According to reports, an assailant opened fire on 53-year-old Martin Joseph and his son, who is 28-year-old Solomon Joseph, killing Martin and injuring Solomon. Martin's father, Gerard Joseph, says it's been days since he last saw his son. Hospital Road resident Solomon is fighting for his life at the Owen King EU Hospital. I pray that they get the people that do that to my father, kill my father innocently and have my brother in the hospital fighting for his life. I pray that the police do their job and get whoever or whoever is responsible for that. Martin's daughter says his life was snuffed out too soon. My father is a loving father. He was a loving father. He was a good man. He didn't deserve the way they killed him. And my brother, my brother is a loving boy as well. He didn't deserve what they did to him. And we just pray to God that he overcome that and we recover from all of what he's going through right now. Loved ones of the deceased are pleading with citizens to resort to more peaceful means of resolving disputes. I'm very surprised about that because it's been quite a while we haven't heard anything in the community, any violence and stuff. So it's a bit shocking for the new year. It's very devastating, like I said. I don't even know. I just need them to stop the violence. Whoever, the culprits, whoever that's involved in the violence, I just calling out on them and tell them stop the violence. That's not the way. Relatives say Martin Joseph was not known to be in trouble with anyone. The 53-year-old Foa Show resident was a stevedore. Police are investigating the shooting incident. Colby DeVoe, HDS News Force. Scores of Barbadian students are not satisfied with the revised grades released by the Caribbean Examination Council on Monday. We have the details in this report from Barbados Today. The regional examining body has reviewed 80% of papers that had been submitted for remarking and review and has promised to release the remainder shortly. However, in an interview with Barbados Today, student advocate Khalil Koftiwala said, it appears very few changes have been made. A number of students have um, received the results of their, of their reviews. Um, in, many in, in, in many all instances that I am aware of, um, they, they have been very incremental and sporadic in the sense that uh, if a student might have queried all, um, all four of the subjects that came for all three, um, only one might have been changed and it might have been changed from a four to a three. Um, so sporadic and incremental, so I, I have not observed any changes um, of my uh, more than one grade point upwards. Uh, so we have quite a few changes. Um, and of course, we are very happy from all of those students who have finally gotten those deserved grades in those subjects. Um, but by and large, there still remains a major problem with many students um, receiving only partially that which they deserve. Um, and or in some students have, um, have gotten all of their reviews back without changes. Over in Guyana, the Ministry of Health, along with its partners, launched a new action plan against HIV for the years 2021 to 2025, as the country seeks to improve several key areas intended to eliminate the virus by 2030. Gordon Mosley tells us more. The new action plan brings together all their new methods to spread awareness and share information to curb the spread of HIV. 
Speaking at the launch this morning, Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony said that while there remains a constant fight against HIV, there is still room for improvement as many of the goals set in the past have not yet been realized. Uh, while we aspire to end the AIDS by 2030, to get to that end point, there are many steps that we have to take along the way. And therefore, um, while we were aiming to have the 1990-90 by 2020, we have set in the past a target of achieving 95, 95, 95 by 2025. And that's still something that is viable. When you look at our situational analysis that is in this particular plan, you would notice that uh, we did uh, do some good work and we were able to achieve the first 90 because we are now currently at 94% of persons who are HIV positive and have been tested. So they know their status, but we are a little still off with the other two 90s, and that is for the persons who have been tested and are on treatment, we're at 73%. And for those who have been on treatment and are virally suppressed, we are at 75%. The health minister also said the ministry and its stakeholders have a lot of work to do to meet the demands of the last goal and move toward the new targets. He said a new action plan seeks to improve areas to better the fight against HIV. So while we fix existing problems, we also have to look forward to how we can improve and also use new methodologies to ensure that we can uh, get to those targets for 2025. With the new and improved action plan, the Ministry of Health is looking to introduce self-testing and better care for HIV patients. Guyana recorded 500 new cases of HIV in 2019, and there are more than 8,000 persons living with HIV in the country. Many of them are aware of their status. Close to 6,000 of those persons are on antiretroviral treatment. In sports, the spotlight is on cricket. Batting maestro Chris Gale headlines a bevy of West Indies stars confirmed for next weekend's draft of the Pakistan Super League. The 41-year-old Gale, along with veteran all-rounder Dwayne Bravo, former 2020 captain Carlos Brathwaite, and openers Lendell Simmons and Evan Lewis, were among 25 foreign players announced by the Pakistan Cricket Board on Tuesday. Barbados-born England all-rounder Chris Jordan in among the foreign players, indicating his participation in the sixth edition of the showpiece set to run from February 20 to March 2022. Gale, the most successful T20 batsman ever, with 13,584 runs and 2,200s from 411 matches, has been installed in the platinum category, along with his West Indies counterparts and the likes of Afghan superstar leg spinner Rashid Khan and South African fast bowler Dale Stein. And that's our package. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place, for more news and sports right here on PBCJ, the People's Station.